What up, gamers? I'm Jason Deere. I'm Sammy G. And we are Dyson Dragons, and today we are going to be reviewing the third expansion for Legends of Andor, Journey to the North. Oh, Journey to the North. Michael Manzel, you've done it again. So many wonderful components, a beautiful boat that they give you. I like the fact that it's wooden as well. Yes, and not just a piece of cardboard. But this game is for two to four players. It is the direct expansion to... Legends of Andor, you do need the base game to actually utilize and enjoy this to its full potential. Playtime's around 60 to 90 minutes, but, you know, set a nice time just to actually set up the game. Not a knock on it, just that there are a lot of components that come in Andor. Yeah, and you don't need all of them for every legend, which means you do have to spend some time organizing it. And you can expand the game to five to six players if you use the New Heroes expansion. And what I do like about this game, it does include the uh, the two boards for the New Heroes uh, already in the game, so it's already set up. That's right, so even if you don't have the New Heroes expansion, you can also check out a review on that. Not necessary, but again, if you wanna make it to five to six players, you need that expansion, so you get to play as additional characters. And that being said, we're gonna take this to the table. We're gonna see what's inside this lovely, lovely journey. So grab your drink, grab your buddy, and Let's take it to the table. Let's play Journey to the North. Oh, wait, we're, we're already in the North, so where are we going? North Pole, I guess. Arctic Circle. We Arctic have our rum, it's a ship, so we're pirates. We are pirates. Yes. I've never heard of Northern Pirates, though. I think it's a little too cold. We're very apologetic. Sorry, we stole your stuff. The board is set up, and we are about to start our journey to the North. Now, you may notice that we are actually filming this today at a different location. The reason for that is that both Sammy G and myself have been quite busy, but we really wanted to continue our road to the last hope, and we have seen a lot of support on Board Game Geek from uh, users such as Uncivil, as well as on YouTube from uh, Night Spook. So this one is for you guys. We are getting back on the road a little bit earlier than planned. And for this part of the video, what I'm going to do is really just review some of the components that come with Journey to the North. For those of you that have played Andor before, you do know there are a lot of components included in the game, and many of them are only going to come up during certain legends. As you can see here, you have 10 different legends. So you get a lot of uh, legends. It's quite uh, the hefty expansion. And you get two full game boards like the uh, other game as well. So this side of the board is known as the North board. The other side is known as Hadria. So some of the components only come into play depending on what legend and what board you are on. So we're not gonna cover everything. You do get some new fog tokens, but as you can see here, they can be uh, potentially a little bit more devastating than uh, the fog tokens from the original game. And speaking of the original game, don't forget you are going to need the original game to play this game. The original hero boards aren't included. You're going to need uh, your gores. You're also going to need your narrator and a few uh, other elements. You will not have the red enemy dice. You will, of course, have the new enemy dice, these white die right here, which will correspond to the sea creatures. So as you can see, the sea creatures with the white base will be using the white dice. You also have another new feature which is known as fame. You can see the fame track up here which is tracked by the bard and the bard keeps track of this new resource. Now the new resource really replaces that uh, the castle defense mechanic. If you are out of fame during a uh, legend essentially uh, you die. And one of the very cool elements are the new event cards which are known as win cards. Now win cards will let you know exactly how you're allowed to steer your ship depending on how the wind is blowing. There are also some storm cards. Now storm cards will have some uh, adverse effects on your heroes uh, potentially. And of course, like we said, there's a ship. You get this nice, beautiful wooden meeple of the ship, which I uh, found was a lot more fun to uh, drive around the board than I thought. Of course, for those of you playing with five or six players, you do have the five and six player expansion pieces. And what would a ship be without the ability to make it cooler? So we do have the new board, the Aldebaran, which is actually upgradable. So by spending gold, you can increase the capabilities of your ship and make beating some of the uh, 
big baddies such as uh, the Sea Giant right here are quite a bit easier. And just to give you a close up, we do have our new hero, Stiana or Stinner, whose powers are really focused around using the ship. And we'll take a closer look at them uh, later on. You, of course, have your two hero tokens. You also have some new allies that we're going to uh, have in the game, such as the merchant right here, the cartographer, and some really cool heroes. Now, in terms of other new elements, some of the we also have the uh, new equipment board. So as you can see, there's the equipment board here for the north board. When you arrive in Hadria, it's a different equipment board. As you can see, there are some new items that come into play. And don't forget, you need all of these items here from the original and or base game. They are not included. So we've looked at the Hadria board. What are some of those things that we can use? Well, you have the Eternal Flames, which uh, are pretty neat. There are also some portal tokens. And uh, we haven't gone to Hadria yet, so I'm not quite sure exactly what they do, but just want to give you a little bit of flavor as to uh, what's forthcoming. You have your North Monster tokens, which uh, have some potentially negative or good effects for the heroes, like everything uh, in Andor. You have your Storm tokens, which can do some interesting things uh, as well. Haven't quite gone into uh, into that part of the game uh, yet. We of course have some new dice. Some of them we can use, as you saw, there was that blue one that's listed on the uh, Hadria board. Of course, some new dice to make the enemies uh, even more challenging. And what is a sea adventure game like this one without, of course, your sea monster. So you have three uh, Octohen tokens as well, so beware of the sea monster. And one thing that I think is really cool is we get some new weapons. So you do have access to some new magical weapons that you're able to obtain as you journey uh, into the north. There are also some other cards that we have here, such as the tower magic cards, the upside down. <laughs> so I'll flip them for you guys. Fire magic cards. So yes, we'll get to burn some stuff down. And then some new mission specific cards that you can see. And as you saw, there's, they're numbered. So those mission specific cards do relate to specific uh, areas of the board. And what is uh, journeying around the sea without the, the chance of being shipwrecked? So you also have the shipwrecked tokens. And any end of the game is not complete without, of course, the rule books. So this rule book is a little bit different. Uh, you'll probably want to review uh, the companion guide. It has some good clarifications to the rules, but you don't really get a quick start guide in this one. So you have your standard rule book. It's really going to show you how to set up the first legend. And then on the second page, which I'm just going to bring into uh, clarity here, it's really going to show you how to sail your ship. And that's going to be a lot of what we cover in uh, the how to play, how to use the ship, because that is really the main difference in the game, as well as how the uh, sea creatures uh, interact with the board. And then just so I don't forget, when you get to Hadria, you're in the further north. It's winter time. There are some snow tokens, as you can see right here that will uh, probably replace fog tokens. We haven't quite gotten the Hadria yet, but I did want to uh, show them to our viewers as well. And that really covers a lot of the components that are here in Legends of Andor. So we will take a look at the Hadria board and a closer look at Stinner and uh, probably even a closer look at the Alder Baron, just so you can see uh, how important it is to upgrade your ship. And then we'll get into the how to play. Stay tuned. We've journeyed past the north and we finally arrived in the land of Hadria. Now this is just to give you a quick sneak peek uh, at the board. As you can see, there is a lot more land mass uh, in Hadria and the game uh, will definitely change once you arrive there. You still have access to your boat and you will be using the uh, different equipment board. Now, part of the reason why I wanted to uh, show this to you is I realized there was two other things I neglected to show you uh, when we were reviewing the components. 
that are the uh, the gifts of the north. So think about uh, some of the more powerful uh, items from the original Andor, like the witch's brew. And then you have a new resource, the seashells. Now these are definitely gonna come into play on the north part of the game board, but I wanted to uh, show them to you since I missed it and give you this peek at Hadria because compared to the differences uh, in the boards on the original game, I feel that there is a much larger contrast based on the amount of land mass and uh, the way the game is gonna change with the, the snow tokens and the different items. Now we are going to take a closer look at Stinner and the Aldebaran and the, then we'll get into the how to play. Now we're gonna take a closer look at our new hero Stinner or Stiana and the the ship, sorry, let's start over. Now we're gonna take a closer look at the new, give it a minute. Now we're gonna take a closer look at the new hero, Stinner or Stiana, as well as your ship, the Alderbaran. Let's start with uh, Stinner right now. So Stinner's special ability is that when they are on board the ship, so on board the Alder Baron, they can take the ship and move it to any adjacent space. Now, using that in conjunction with certain wind, uh, wind cards, and depending on where you're trying to go, that can be very powerful and make moving around, moving around the game board a lot easier. Now, when you're taking a look at the Alder Baron, you'll notice there are three areas of the ship that you are able to upgrade for four gold each. There is also the ship's cabin right here, where you can leave items for other heroes, one square item, one oval item, and it's very important to note that when you are fighting on the Alder Baron, heroes will roll one dice at a time. Now, why is that important? It's because if you upgrade certain areas, you're gonna really wanna be rolling one dice at a time. So if you upgrade the ballista on the back, so add some damage, the hero who is standing at the ballista will be able to total up their last two dies rolled, which is a, a big thing, especially if you happen to roll a six and then another six, you're getting both of those and not just, uh, not just one potentially. If you go ahead and add the second mass, you can double the amount of speed that you have based on your win card. So if it's telling you you can move in one direction too, you can actually make it four. If it's four, eight, and so forth. And finally, with the figurehead, if you have a hero who is standing on this spot, they will then get an extra plus four strength points added to their attack roll. So as you can see, upgrading the Alder Baron really makes it much more effective later on in the game. Now we're gonna take a closer look as to how you actually play with the Alder Baron and some of the new rules in Journey to the North. Now let's take a look at how you play Journey to the North. For those of you that are joining us uh, for the first time on our road to the last hope, please take a look at our previous and or video. You'll see the link right up there. It will show you how to play the game. For the purposes of this video, as this is only an expansion, we're gonna focus on the expansion elements, such as sailing the ship, how you can engage the enemies, and the rules with regards to fighting together when you are on the Aldebaran. And uh, don't forget the fame track over here. That is another uh, new resource that you have to manage in Journey to the North. Now the ship is here and we are able to move the ship based on the wind card. So we'll bring the wind card over here and I flipped over two of them just to give you guys an idea as to how they defer. So you can see the black point up here. Now that refers to north. So north is where the time track is. So essentially, if you're ever confused, you can put the card like this next to the ship and it will help you uh, guide your movement. We'll use the green card because that's the one you're gonna start with and I'll just put the, uh, the other standard wind card back. And let's take a look at moving the ship. So I can move it one, two north for one hour on the time track. And in this case, I'm not able to move it north again because of rocky crags. You cannot move the ship through rocky crags. You have to go around them. So if I wanted to engage the, the troll there, I'd have to move another two to the west and then move again northeast. And I can move up to three so I can move adjacent to the troll or in the same space as the troll to engage it. And that is really how we would be moving the ship around the board. Now let's take a look at 
disembarking. How do heroes disembark the ship? Well, first off, we will reset uh, the time track there. You can move the ship. It would cost you an hour. It would then cost you another hour to disembark. And it's important to note that you can disembark anywhere. For example, you can disembark to space 105. You can even disembark from here to space 111. As long as part of it is touching the water space where the ship is, you can disembark to that square. So you don't need the piers. Now, you cannot disembark onto a rocky crag. Heroes are not allowed to stand on rocky crags. And just to give you even a better idea, you see this space here, 113. You can disembark for an hour from here to 113. Now you remember that I said I would show you why Stinner's special ability is so good. We're just going to take a look at moving to engage that cave troll. Sorry, not cave troll, the, the sea troll. And how many hours it would cost. So if it was a regular hero, you would have to spend 1, 2, 1, 2, then 1, 2, or 1. Which is for a total of 3 hours of your time to engage the cave troll. Now, if this was Stinner, so Stinner is on board the ship, they're moving the ship, you can move one, two, you can move adjacently by one, so that would be any of these squares, we want to go after the cave troll, so we're moving adjacent, then I can just spend the time to move up north, I'm now adjacent to the sea troll, and we can then engage him. I will now reset this stuff, and we'll talk about the fame track, the other important resource in this game. Now when monsters arrive on land, as you can see here they follow the arrows from their starting points in the sea. There's one, three, four, and two. And when monsters arrive on land, for every monster that is on land, you will take negative fame when you get back into the sunrise box. So once you restart, you see the fame track here. That will then mean that you would lose negative fame based on the amount of players you have in the game. And when you're at zero fame, you lose. So the amount of fame you lose per player with two players, it is one. With three players, it is going to be two. And with four players, it is going to be three. And that is how the fame track works. And that really covers the differences uh, in this game. Oh, and don't forget, you have all your information about the enemies here on the board and then there's also this fun track right here and that's just really to tally together your total strength of all the heroes that are on the Aldebaran just to make fighting together better and as we said with the Aldebaran you can engage creatures in any adjacent space whether they are in sea and on land so now stay tuned for our review of the game now before we get to the review, I just really uh, wanted to take a closer look at fighting together and combat in uh, Journey to the North. So that's what we're going to do right now. So when you are on the Aldebaran, you can fight together. So all the heroes, as you can see right here, all the heroes can collectively attack the gore that is uh, adjacent to them. And as in uh, all the Andor games, it would cost you collectively one hour. So let's just say they're doing it at the start of the round. Everyone has their token in the sunrise box. It would collectively take them one hour. Now, the other thing that you can do, and this is where it gets really interesting, is use the special abilities on the Aldebaran. And what's important to note is that depending on where your heroes are standing, that's going to determine who can use certain special abilities. So in this case, Iara could be using the Ballista, but as you need to have multiple dice, and those of you that have played Andor know that Iara only has one dice, that position isn't good for her. So you're much better putting someone like Thorn or Stinner in that position. Iara might do better being up ahead, using the figurehead to get some extra strength points. Now all that can only be done once you have upgraded the ship, but I really wanted to show you that setup and moving your characters and how placing them on the ship is uh, important later on uh, in the games or later on during a uh, specific legend. Now you can see Stinner's character right here and we're going to talk about uh, fighting sea creatures. So for example if Stinner is here on 103 he is not able to attack the sea creature. He may attack the sea creature if he happens to use the bow. The bows are available in the original game so if he purchases a bow he can then Roll his dice, 
and attack the sea creature. Don't forget that when you're on the Alder Baron, you can only roll your dice one die at a time. Uh, let's say Thorn was happy to use the Ballista. Now, as we said in the earlier on, is that they get to take their last two die rolls. So let's see here. I get a six. I want to keep that roll. I can roll another die. And what do you know? Another six. So that's a great roll for Thorn. By using the Ballista, you would actually get 12 attack and very much be able to uh, defeat uh, one of the creatures. Now you don't have to fight together when you're on the Alder Baron. You can choose to fight solo and that's where maybe being uh, up, up, on, up on the figurehead and having four more strength points can be uh, advantageous as you're not going to be spending as much time as certain of your uh, compatriots. Now when it comes to uh, fighting together, I'm just going to move back to dinner. Let's say Thorin was here and Stinner was uh, on the Aldebaran. You can actually all fight together. The heroes on the Aldebaran would be rolling one day at a time. So Stinner would roll run. Yeah, would roll run. And Archer would also roll one. And they can fight together with Thorn, who is on land. Because they are adjacent to uh, the space where he's attacking. And Thorn is occupying the same space as the enemy. Now... If this happened to be the archer on land, he could be adjacent and still attack because that goes with his special ability. Or if it happened to be Stinner equipped with the bow, that would be possible as well. And now that we've clarified combat in Journey to the North, we're going to head on uh, to a review of the game. So, Sammy G, Journey to the North. Well, for us, uh, we're pretty much in the Great White North uh, already. Yeah. What do you think of uh, Journey to the North? So I guess we journey to the Arctic Circle. So our journey to the Arctic Circle is actually kind of funny because the other side of the game board, which I don't think we showed, actually is snow covered. So it is very cool. much snow covered. So, uh, so look, that being said, it is an Andor game. And what do we mean by that? You guys know. We love it. And this just builds on what we already love. It builds on certain elements that we knew, like what, what the real treasure of Andor is, is that cooperative fighting. Yep. And this really brings it up to the forefront. Yeah. Certain elements such as the ship, oh, which is so something. Wonderful. Yeah. Sorry. So much fun. It's something that also, uh, when I looked at the box, I was like, really? A ship? Moving the ship is a lot more fun than uh, we actually uh, expected. A lot easier than... Yep. Uh, I would have uh, predicted uh, as well. And so, so, so clever in how they use the wind card as the new event card to mm -hmm. actually show that there is a shift in the wind. So you're allowed to move one direction maybe a little bit faster than the other one. Yeah. So it's really, really cool and I love that. Yeah, and it adds a, a little bit of randomness similar to a dice roll, but not exactly like a dice. Yeah. But don't forget the storm cards are in there and they can affect you negatively. Please shuffle them very yeah. well because once you draw a storm card, you will have to draw another wind card. And that means you could end up with another storm card. Our first playthrough, we ended up drawing how many storm cards in a row? I think four out of the six that are in there. So we it pretty much killed us, the storms. Yeah. So it was an epic of, uh, epic of storms. But uh, that being said, yeah, it just builds on more of what we love, the ship element, the fighting cooperatively. Yep. But the ship also brings us to one of the negative points. And this is something that we're not sure if it's just lost in translation. And we decided not to go look online to get uh, some clarification because we want to bring a straight up honest review of the game. And... Unfortunately, there's some element that contradicts themselves. I'll let Sammy G talk about it since uh, he spent the most time trying to sort it out in the rule books. That's it. So we, I read all the rule books. I read the legend card. So the legend card says, oh, you're allowed to fight adjacent. The ship board says uh, you can only do it if you have a ranged weapon. Or that's what it says in the rule book. Yeah, sorry. sorry. The, uh, the legend says it's uh, if you have a ranged weapon, you can fight adjacent creatures. The shipboard just says you can fight adjacent all the time. The fact that we're arguing which what says what, the point is it shouldn't be contradictory. <laughs> it should be the same rules everywhere that makes it clear as day. And then even when we upgraded our ship with a ballista, to me that's a ranged weapon. Yeah, but nothing says it's a ranged weapon. There you go. So it could be lost again, lost in translation, but it does detract a little bit because... Maybe we're a little bit harsh on it because we've come to know Andor as this really simple pick up play, use the start yes. the quick start guide. And it still delivers in the quick start guide is just this one 
rule element, which is so important, especially when it comes to combat. Yeah, so that's why we definitely uh, have a little bit of attraction uh, on that. The other thing that we did not really enjoy is the fact that you actually need the base game to play Journey to the North. Now, I do think Michael Manziel and Cosmos Games respond in the right fashion with The Last Hope, yep. which is now a complete standalone game. The amount of stuff that you need from Andor is so minuscule for Journey to the North, and you're paying the price of a full board game that it, it bothers me. But if you're an Andor fan, it doesn't matter because you will have all that stuff already. Exactly. So it is sold as an expansion and the minimal stuff is pretty much hero boards, gold, and a couple of the tokens from yeah, the original game. the dice That's as it. well. That's dice. it. So a couple of dice. But yeah. my point is it's, it's so minimal that it almost shouldn't be an expansion. Just add those extra elements in and you have a full standalone game, which you're paying at a pretty much a full standalone price. Exactly. It's uh, the same price as buying Andor itself, but with less stuff. So, yeah, so I mean, for me, the, the score, 8 on 10. It, it's still yeah. a wonderful Andor game. If you like Andor, you like what the base game had to offer, this expands the adventure and gets mm -hmm. you ready for The Last Hope. No, it's definitely an 8 on 10. It is absolutely a must have based on our other rating system uh, for the expansions. Mm -hmm. You don't need to play the Star Shield. You don't need the new heroes. If you want to play with more people, definitely get the new heroes. I got to give uh, the Journey to North credit because it does have the two boards that you yep. need to play with uh, five or six players. And I do like the fact that the boat is wooden. I think that adds so much to it. The fact that it's not cardboard. Yeah. I just love moving that little ship around uh, the map. So well polished, so well glued in there. It's, it's actually a really wonderful component. And yeah, we, we got a lot of joy just moving the ship around the board. I really didn't expect that either. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Because you think, oh, it's kind of gimmicky. But it's not. It's wonderful. Yeah. So look, that's pretty much it. This is a must-have. Go find if you love Andor. If you don't like Andor, stay away from this. Yeah, it's you're pretty not much gonna, as simple as that. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to like it. This is very much an Andor game. This is the second part of the board game trilogy. It is built as an expansion. It is really not the expansion. This is episode two. So if you're planning to play the whole trilogy, as Sammy G said... Play this one. It's setting you up for the finale. Absolutely. So from us at Dice and Dragons, thank you so much for watching. As always, grab a drink, grab your buddy, and keep playing keep, games. Keep playing games. And uh, we did not freeze while journeying up to the north. We're just used to it. We're Canadian. We're hardy Canadians. You know what we really need? If there was some hockey in Andor. We can introduce it. We could. I mean, your tokens are like little round pucks. I wonder if we can just smack them around with cardboard. That's so silly. It is. So, so silly. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> thanks for watching. Hey, thanks very much for watching, guys. If you like what you saw, as always, please comment. Please subscribe. Won't cost you any gold, XP, willpower, nothing. It doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> Yes, and if you'd like to follow us to get some more information about when there'll be some new videos and what our upcoming content might be, please follow us on Twitter at Dice underscore and underscore Dragons. You can find us on Facebook at Dice and Dragons Games. We like to interact with our fans, so please head on over and comment. And then you can see some pictures as to maybe what game's coming up at Dice and Dragons on Instagram. And if that's a little bit complicated, don't worry, we included all that information down below in the video description. So you might see by about now some other links to our other content. It's again free for you guys. We love what we do. And as always, grab a drink, grab your buddy, keep playing games. Keep playing games.